Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing all right. I'm back out here in the garage. Today, I gotta do a little brake work on the old Jeep. Okay, so uh, I've been driving this thing around a little bit. And you know, I knew the brakes were, well, they needed attention, but uh, they worked, so I kept driving it. And uh, I was pulling up on off of a kind of a busy road onto the side road into my neighborhood. I went to slow down, and the brake pedal went to the floor. So that got a little bit exciting. Uh, thankfully, it didn't hit anybody, and from there, it was all uphill to my house, so I didn't really need brakes to get home. But we're here, and I can't drive the thing. So I got to get in here and dig around and figure out what's going on with it um, and work on that. I got a hunch I need to replace a master cylinder. So I'm going to tear it out tonight. Uh, I actually ordered one last night on Amazon. Should be here tomorrow. So I want to tear into that. <clears throat> but before I do, it's pretty tight in here. So I'm going to have to fire this guy up, move it out, move it around a little bit, pull a little bit over in the garage, maybe back it in. So let me do that real quick. And then we'll start working on the old Jeep brakes. And I can't seem to manage to run a camera and a light at the same time. Here we go. All right, so there's the master cylinder. I moved that the uh, boot off the end of it there so you can kind of see it when I did a bunch of brake fluid round out on me. So this thing uh, looks like it's gonna be a real royal pain in the butt to get out. So yeah, I got that going for me, but I'm gonna try to gracefully get in here and dismantle there's a couple of bolt holes on the side holding it on. I think I can get those better from the top. And then from the bottom down here, I'm gonna have to try to manage to get one. There should be two uh, brake hoses coming off that end. So, all right, I'm gonna get here and struggle with this for a little bit and see if we can get that thing off of there. All right, so upon further review, changing my perspective a little. One, you can see where it's leaking out real bad out that end. Two, there's only one brake line that comes off of there. And if I can get that one disconnected without stripping that, I can probably get these two bolts off the side pretty easy. And then I think this plunger just drops out. So then I should be able to then maybe pull it out the top. I think that's the quickest way to get there. Yeah, crazy enough, the brake lines on this thing, it's just one line that goes up to a junction up there near the front. Anyway, and then from there, the line runs all the way back for my back brakes. So. I'm gonna sit here and try to pop that guy loose, get those two bolts out. There's pretty much no way to do this without getting brake fluid in my hair, but I'm gonna try. Here we go. <laughs> Whoever engineered this sure had this project in mind for being harder than it needed to be. There it is, master cylinder. There it is, the master cylinder. It has two bolts that go through that bracket and then through it and then they tie into the frame or a bracket on the frame. However, you can't get the bolt out because the bell housing's in the way. Oh, anyway, I did manage to get that line off the front real easy. Now I gotta try to get my, uh, I gotta get my wires off there too without breaking those. Anyway, I got a feeling I'm gonna lay under there and shake a bunch of 50 something years worth of grease and junk in my eyes while I try to wrestle that thing loose. But we're getting there. Oh, it's one thing after another with this thing. So I was uh, unhooking the wires off the for the brake light on that uh, plug. It's the sensor that's, anyway, the brake light wires off the master cylinder. 
and was reminded that I should disconnect my battery about the time that I struck an arc across the exhaust pipe with that wire. So I came up here to pull the negative cable off and the lug broke off. I mean it just went thunk and there we go. Oh. That's how the simple project turns into something big. All right, I got the master cylinder off and it was as much of a struggle as I thought it would be. You can see down here it's just kind of rusty and crusty and nasty. And so that's where it's leaking out. It's just nasty. It needed replaced. I'm going to break this guy loose, hopefully spin this whole fitting off, and then set this thing to the side and then wait for my new parts to show up. In the meantime, I'll probably go through and do a little cleaning up under there and get ready to stuff the new one back in, hopefully tomorrow night when it shows up. So see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys. It's the next day. I'm back here. And check it out. I wish the DMV was as quick and as helpful as Amazon.com because they got that here in a couple days, just like I'd hoped. wasn't too bad. It's like 40 bucks. If I remember, I'll put a link down in the description with the master cylinder for the old 64 CJ5. Uh, so all I got to do here is bench bleed this thing, and then I'm sure that sucker is just going to slide right in there. A couple of bolts, and we're out of here. Driving. I'm going to open up the garage door, get a little bit of work happening. Looks like a little bit of a yard sale here because swap meet on Saturday. I am pumped, man. Finally, after all this time, the first real swap meet in about six months. And it's up at Bandemir Speedway in Denver, about an hour from here on Saturday. So, hey, if you're local, check it out. And uh, get this thing bench bled. If you guys haven't, I'll put a little link up at the top of how I did this before on my old uh, Model A. I did a pretty good in depth on bench bleeding. But essentially, just recycling the fluid, right? If it comes out of here, putting it back in here, I'll dump some fluid in, then slowly work the piston until I get all the air bubbles out. Then this guy's ready to go. Put a little cap in there, which I think came with the kit. Yeah, son of a gun. And uh, go shove in the car. So, enjoy some good music here as you watch me bench bleed this thing. Got her bled, got a plug on it. Now it's time for me to face the music. Ugh, get in there and struggle it in. If you guys go to doing this, an important piece, because I realize there might be somebody actually looking to replace the uh, master cylinder on their old Jeep. If you go to do this, an important piece of these little clips, okay? And these clips go right here in the end of this little sensor that goes to your brake lights, okay? Uh, like I mentioned yesterday too, uh, these are constant and hot, so you know I got my battery disconnected right now. But these things slide down inside like this, and then those clips pop on there and retain them in place. Okay, now that that's over, I'll resume my struggle to get bolts and whatnot. This thing's really in the way. This right here, it's like an extra drive line. It's the PTO for the winch, and man, it shoots right through here where it, it, you need it. It's same with the exhaust, but all right, we'll get it figured out. Okay, guys, under the Jeep here still. So if you guys find yourself in this situation, 
the trick is to get these bolts back in. I'll try to show you. Now, even if we didn't have this exhaust pipe or this PTO shaft coming through here, it would still be a pain because the bell housing and the transmission are in the way of those bolts coming in. So the trick is, you come right up here, you take this cotter pin out and slip this piece of uh, this metal bracket off of there. And then you can lift up the master cylinder, swing it up out of the way, get the back bolt in, drop it all the way down, get the front bolt in, and then you can come back here, put the bracket back on there and drop that cotter pin back in. So it's kind of a puzzle, but I think I'm getting there. Now I just gotta tighten everything up and uh, we'll be ready to bleed some brakes. All right guys, back under the car here, uh, under the Jeep. This time we're gonna bleed some brakes. And normally I like to do my one man brake bleeding method, but I got some help and she's a good helper. So, Izzy, go ahead and pump it. Pump it once or twice. Hold it. You holding? Okay, lots of fluid coming out. Okay, pump. Anyway, so you can see how this goes. I'm just gonna keep doing this until I start seeing clear liquid coming through here in the uh, clear piece of brake line, or brake uh, drain line here. Once I get clear fluid, then I know I got all the good stuff pumped out to here, and then I'm gonna go to that wheel and repeat, and then I'll go to that one and that one. So, here we go. All right, guys, I got it all done. Bricks are bled, don't see any leaks. Uh, man, what a pain, but that thing has changed. Yep, I overfilled it a touch, so it looks like it's leaking out the top. But it's pretty good. Oh, there's one more thing, too. I wanted to hook up a temp gauge on this thing. And uh, I was looking for where on the head to put a temp gauge. And so I found it back here where the temp gauge goes, right down there, and this little wire was disconnected. So I put a new end on that wire, crimped it on there, plugged it in. Hopefully my temp gauge works, too. So even though it's raining a little bit, me and my trusty sidekick, who helped me bleed the brakes, are gonna go out and hit the road a little bit and see how everything works. Thanks for following along. I really appreciate all you guys. Don't forget to hit subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.